Scripture reading this morning is from Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 through 38. For those who have ears to hear. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now as your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. This week our staff, our church staff, had our Christmas party, and we have a lot of fun together, being together. We have a wonderful church staff. I think you would agree with me, the best church staff anywhere. And we have, thank you. Yes. They're, they're amazing, not amazing, not only amazing in what they're able to do, but they're really just who they are. You need to know we have a tremendous team and we work well together. But um, we had our entertainment for the, for the staff Christmas party. Sometimes we do our, our own entertainment, but they decided not to let me sing my Robert Goulet Christmas hits this year. So um, we sang uh, with Randy Brooks. Randy Brooks came, we brought him in. Randy's a member at First Methodist Church Dallas and is in the choir there. And I've known Randy since um, he and my brother-in-law were in a band called Young Country together in the 1970s. They used to play at places like the Railhead on, on Greenville. But I know none of you were hanging out on Greenville Avenue in the 1970s. But if you were, you might have seen Young Country, that their band. They had quite a following in the area and uh, did a number of USO tours and things like that. Well, um, Randy's claim to fame is that uh, Randy, besides being a great musician and, and talented guy, he wrote one of the Christmas classics. Did you know that we had at our staff Christmas party the writer of the Christmas classic, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer? <laughs> you may love the song, you may love to hate the song, but now I've put it in your head for the rest of the day. And all this amazing music our choir's doing, I hope you'll hear their music and maybe not get stuck on Yeah, now really put it in your mind. Thank you. I did my job. Left you with a remnant of the sermon that you'll carry with you throughout the week. 
So um, he told us the story of how, how the song came to be. And they were uh, playing in Lake Tahoe for three weeks just before Christmas. And um, as they were playing, they thought, well, let's do some let's do some Christmas music as part of our set. And then he thought, well, I'll write this novelty song. And he'd heard this Merle Haggard song that he really didn't like. He loved Merle Haggard, but he didn't like this one song because it was a song that Merle Haggard wrote about a Christmas card that they'd get from Grandma. And he said, I knew by the first verse that he was going to knock off Grandma in the third verse. (laughs) And sure enough, Grandma dies, and they get the Christmas card from Grandma, you know, and it's, it's a tearjerker. And so Randy says, well, I th- decided to take off that theme and, and do a song. But he said, I decided to take care of Grandma in the first verse and then tell the story in the other, in, in, you know, in the other verses. So um, he does that. And it's just a novelty song. They sang it. No big deal. Some of the people liked it and said, oh, yeah, that, that's a cute song. Did it as part of that show at Lake Tahoe. And they left. And the next band that was coming in was a band called Elmo and Patsy. Well... Um, Randy's plane was delayed or canceled and so they had to stay over another night and isn't it amazing how ordinary circumstances can turn into something extraordinary but it just so happens that they went to see Elmo and Patsy that night, the band did because they were playing in the same hotel they were playing in and um, because they had to lay over a night, they just thought they'd, they'd do this, and people found out, Elmo and Patsy found out they were there and said, well, why don't you come up on stage and we'll jam together and sing some songs together. And so they did that, and somebody said, hey, do that grandma song. And so Randy does the grandma song. And Elmo and Patsy, after the show, say, you got to teach us that song. We want to put it in our act because we're going to be doing Christmas here the rest of the, the week. So... They, they did. They, he put it on a cassette tape for them and didn't hear anything about it, you know. The next thing he knows, he gets a call from a reporter because a, a DJ in San Francisco has played it and they'd never had the switchboard light up like it did there in Christmas of 1979 when that DJ played Grandma. Because people were calling saying, never play that song again. (laughs) Or, why don't you play that grandma song? And so they, they, uh, it it just, it took off and took on a life of its own. He said, you know, when he first heard the Elmo and Patsy version of that song, he hated that song. And then he got his first royalty check. (laughs) He said, I love that song. I love their version of, of my song. And uh, he said that's the song that put his daughters through college and hasn't made him a rich man, but it's made him, you know, kind of infamous for being the writer. But isn't it amazing how an ordinary circumstance can turn extraordinary under the right circumstances? You ever experienced that in your life where an ordinary day becomes extraordinary because something unique happens that makes you wake up and recognize that this is bigger. It's bigger than just the ordinary moment, the mundane things that you're going through. And I think if we're blessed in our lives, we have those moments. We go through those mundane days, those, those days just like every other day, and then suddenly we wake up and we see what an extraordinary life we've been given. What an extraordinary gift that we have been given to live life. And, and Mary is going through her ordinary task one day when something extraordinary happens. An angel of the Lord appears to her and says to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Now, she is just an ordinary girl. So she's an ordinary person. And what happened to her on that day in the midst of ordinary circumstances is that God's extraordinary grace became known to her. God's extraordinary grace became known to an ordinary person like Mary. She didn't think she was special. She didn't think there was anything about her. But the first thing is that, that 
this extraordinary grace reaches to the ordinary person. It's what, one of the reasons we connect with Mary so much, I think, is that Mary was an ordinary person who found favor with God. And, and it's, it's an indication of, to us about who God is and what God's up to in this world. That God is for us. That God favors us. You know, a lot of people think that God is out to get them or, or God's a mean old man in the sky who's opposed to them and just waiting for them to slip up so, so that God can punish them. Some people have that conception of God in their minds. And Mary has this insight on this day through the visit of this angel that God is a God of love, that God loves her, that God favors her, that God is for her and not against her. And I pray that we would also, like Mary, experience that, that kind of love and grace, that, that kind of experience of knowing, you know, the Lord is with us and that we have found favor with God. It, it's, it's the kind of grace that's just because. Why does, why does God find favor with Mary just because? Why does God find, you know, find Mary favored? Is there anything Mary did to earn that? No, it's just because God chooses to love. It's just because it's who God is. And you are loved by God, not because of anything you've done or, or not loved by God by anything you've undone. God loves you just because. Just because. That's called grace. It's called God's unmerited favor given to us. And that's what Mary experiences in this moment when, when the angel speaks to her, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. She's terrified, as you can imagine, someone just appearing and, and speaking to her. But then the angel goes on to say to her, don't be afraid, Mary. For you found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus. And then she begins to question. Because whenever God, God's extraordinary grace appears to you, and God's extraordinary um, mission is presented to you, that, that you are called to do something great for God, as Mary is called to do something great for God, she immediately begins to make excuses Almost every person in the Bible that God calls to do something great begins to make excuses. Are you familiar with these excuses? Moses says, I, I, my brother Aaron is a better speaker than I am. And Jeremiah says, I'm too young. And Isaiah says, I'm a man of unclean lips. I'd love to know what he's saying, but, but you know. A man of unclean lips. I can't do anything for God. I mean, all through the Bible, there are these people that God calls unexpectedly to do something great and bold and wonderful for God, and they all have an excuse. And Mary says, hey, I'm you're talking about a baby. I'm a virgin. I, I, I don't even have a husband. And, you know, the angel says to her, don't be afraid, Mary. God's going to do this. God's going to do the heavy lifting. God's going to do the work. God's going to, to, God's spirit is going to work in and through your life. I was talking to a Catholic friend of mine, and he was asking me about the role of Mary, how Methodists view Mary. And I was saying, you know, Mary is, is so important as the mother of Jesus. And he says, well, do you venerate, pray to Mary? And I said to him, you know, we probably don't view Mary in the same way that, that the Catholic Church does in the same sense, but I said, what appeals to me so much about Mary is that she's so ordinary, and he gasped, ah, how can you say Mary's ordinary? And I said, well, Mary just, it seems to me that the, the extraordinary, what makes Mary extraordinary, and why we, we praise God for her, is that she's so ordinary that she was willing to be an instrument of God's grace, that she was willing to bear God's love into this world. That, to me, makes this ordinary person extraordinarily important. 
in our faith? He liked that answer, by the way. He, he was okay after he fell off the floor. Um, but, you know, to me, that's the beauty of Mary, this ordinary person. Now think about you. Ordinary people are called upon by God to do extraordinary things. And, and our sense of, of mission, our sense of purpose in, in our lives is, is not any different, really, than Mary's purpose. That like Mary, you and I have been called into this world to bring God's love to bear, to, to let God's love be born through us into this world, that through our ordinary hands and our ordinary feet, our ordinary connections that we make, God can do something extraordinary and take this ordinariness and and suddenly it becomes amazing, extraordinary, because God's involved in this and working through our lives to bless others. The angel even reassures Mary and says, you know, with God, nothing is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. God can take ordinary circumstances and do amazing things when we open our hearts to God. Mary says, let it be to me according to your will. And she says, yes. She says, I'm willing It's one of the most important statements anyone could ever make. When you sense that God has called you to do something incredible, bold, wonderful for God, is to say, I don't know how, but I'm willing to try. I'm willing to let God use me, work through my life to allow God's love to be shared in this world. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't have the strength on my own. But with God, nothing is impossible. Now, you may not think you've been called to do something that big, like you know, give birth to Jesus, but God's put you here with a purpose. God's put you here with, with incredible resources. You have been given gifts that no one else in this world has. And you've been called to, to use those gifts to let Christ be born through you into this world very much like Mary it comes down to whether we're willing to say use me Lord let it be to me according to your will Ernie Deadweiler was uh, celebrated this week as he died last week and we had his memorial service this week Ernie is a longtime member of our church a teacher a Stephen minister uh, He was on the staff parish committee of this church when I first um, came here. And Ernie would, through the years, remind me about that first interview when I interviewed with the church, the staff parish. They called it an introductory meeting. I called it an interview. Um, They were saying, here's your new pastor, but I I knew it was an interview. And Ernie was a a colonel in the Army and uh, would have loved the football game yesterday. And... He, um, he's about six foot seven, six foot eight. I don't know, a tall man, imposing man. And he would always remind me, he said, do you remember that question I asked you in that first, first meeting? I said, I sure do. And he would remind me about what he asked me. He said, Clayton, uh, this was in 2001, by the way. And he said, the church has just voted to, to relocate to the Central Expressway property. We've just bought the property. We've appointed a, a very capable committee a project executive committee to handle all matters, all details of this transaction. We have a, a, a very um, capable building committee we've appointed to, to go forward. They have good leadership to go forward and, and carry out all the details of this, of this um, relocation. And um, the congregation is poised to do, we have an amazing congregation that has every aspect of ministry covered. We do everything. We have all these great people in place. What exactly do you bring to the table? (laughs) It's a great question, you know. 
And I said, um, Ernie, I think I'm supposed to remind you why. That my job is to remind you why we're doing all these things, why we have all these ministries, why we're relocating, why we're building buildings, why we're doing this. That's my job is to remind you why. So Ernie would, through the years, walk up to me and say, it's about time for you to remind us why again. Or sometimes you're doing a good job of reminding us why. But he always reminded me of that sense of purpose. And the clarity around that has been very important for me to understand my role and to understand who we are as a church. So why are you here? What do you bring to the table? And that was the question Mary was asked, you know, when she, she's sitting there going, what, what do I have to offer? What can I do? But you know, extraordinary things can happen when ordinary people say, I don't know exactly what I bring to the table, but Lord, let it be to me according to your will. Use my life. Let your love be born through me to this world. So how will you live that out? How will you claim that sense of purpose for your life like Mary and let Christ be born into this world through you, through your actions, through your words, through your deeds, through who you are day in and day out. Extraordinary things can happen when ordinary people say yes to God. According to your will, Lord, let it be unto me. Amen.